So if someone's having experience of the body shaking, and uh, I think this is again probably in the spectrum of what's called piety, uh, rapture. So in the factors of jhana, vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ekagata. So five factors. Vitaka is like placing the mind on the object all the time, coming back to the breath, coming back to the breath. And we're not doing it for the sake of jhana, but it's just another way of looking at it. Doing it to maintain consistent mindfulness and samma samadhi is the result. And uh, a little bit or a lot, depending on our accumulated barami. Placing the mind on the object, placing the mind on the object, and then the mind is kind of staying on the object. That's vitaka and vichara. What can happen then is a rapture arises. So for some people that's a feeling of empty space, vast like empty space. And then this is kind of usually occurring in, in like what they call upajara samadhi. Ajahn Anand talks about that a lot. That's when the mind is touching on ajana, close to absorption but not completely absorbed. Some of these states can be very, very peaceful. And it is samadhi. It's just not quite jhana. But don't go thinking it's not, you know, it's not good. It's wonderful. And it's through coming to that again and again and again that it becomes jhana one day in its own time when conditions are right. But some people might feel open, spacious, as big as the sky. And uh, others, the limitations of conventional speech, when you say some people might feel, in that experience there's not much of a sense of being a person. The mind is experienced a sense of incredible spaciousness. Other people can feel really solid and heavy like a mountain, but it's not unpleasant. It's this feeling of kind of immovable, firm, at the same time it's very cool and... Uh, so some people might experience that. Other people, uh, it's the hairs going up on end all over the body. Other people, it's tears, and they're, but they're happy tears. So this is, the mind is turning inwards and experiencing its own innate capacity to feel blissful feelings. So deeper than this is the uh, sukha, or the, sometimes in the another list, a similar thing called pasati, which is like tranquility or very sublime kind of mental pleasure. So in the meditation you actually want to go deeper than the rapture and just feel a profound kind of peaceful coolness. But again, just because we're at this stage in the retreat, some people might be experiencing these things and just to be aware that not to get fascinated, not to get frightened, just keep meditating. And if you can understand that that kind of phenomena, the trilling sensations, the tears, the hu huge space, the heaviness, the hair on end, you can see that as like waves on top of an ocean and, and the coolness, the deeper, when the samadhi is getting deeper, you can see that as like diving down deeper. You want to go past and deeper into deep tranquility. And uh, so again, we get this stage where the mind starts getting sensitive and interesting things start happening. We have, to, we have to guard not to get fascinated, not to get frightened, not to crave. All the other ways the hindrances can start manifesting on a more subtle level. And they can trick you because you might not have had these kind of hindrances before. They're more subtle than the normal ones. It's not like wanting a piece of chocolate cake. Then just staying, like not to be frightened either. If the mind starts to feel like more peaceful than it's ever felt before, not to be frightened, and just stay there. And what will happen is the mind will move from its peaceful state. And then Ajahn Nan keeps instructing us, then we investigate the nature of the body, the elements, body parts, three characteristics. So at that time, although the mind will feel like it doesn't want to meditate anymore and be very happy, it actually has a lot of energy in it and you have to be careful what you do at that time and it's a very good time to investigate because the mind has more clarity and more energy than normal so that's when you put it to work and the uh, investigation goes deeper and you might find that through the power of the investigation then the mind becomes peaceful again and so this way wise contemplation and samadhi support each other and deepen each other so you have a great meditation you don't have to get up and tell everybody, keep going, it might get better and better. 
and uh, it will get better and better. So that, this kind of shaking, I think, is what it is. At the same time, I wouldn't try to feed a physical shaking. So if you can hold the body fairly still, what you might find is feelings of rapture in the mind. So it's like the mind is like probably waving with rapture. And you, the body's going with it. But if you hold the body still, not in really controlling, but just kind of steady and peaceful, you might feel that energy rippling through the body. And, uh, but it's probably good. And this person mentions that when they are, were asked for forgiveness and they felt that they were forgiven for a particular thing, and they felt a lot of shaking, but there was a felt forgiven, I would assume is a very pleasant feeling. So I think I'm going to answer this person's questions one-on-one. Uh, -on -one with Ajahn Pavro because it's very specific advice to one person but just uh, after radiating metta which I practice before my sittings it's easy and smooth for the mind to settle followed by beautiful peace stillness no thoughts and when thoughts come they go they just go by without much effort of course I have my in and out breath but what happens next is that the breath becomes soft and subtle and at times I don't know it's there. At this point my mind is so clear and I realize that she was using the word mass in a question last is actually the clarity and the beautiful space. It goes on and there is the feeling of a push and it gets clearer and after each push it's clearer and it's like uh, space through glass. So I think I understand what this person is experiencing is a sense of the mindfulness is getting more refined and the mind is collecting and that feeling of, of push is actually kind of the power of the sati and the samadhi when the mind's coming more and more inwards. So, in the afternoon, so this is also interesting to see and in, in the afternoons it's not that kind of blissful my sittings are disturbed and I do walking. After the sittings the mindfulness will stay but then it gets less when I retire upstairs. So this is, this is normal. We can't grasp that any of these states is permanent and it's uh, when the mind is turning inwards uh, it's like the mind sense door is actually pulling away from the eyes, ears, nose, tongue and body. So. Usually, ordinary waking consciousness, the mind is interested in sight, sounds, taste, thoughts, and attending to these things. And when we close the eyes and we pull the meditation inwards and these kind of things, what's actually occurring is the mind sense door is turning inwards, pulling away from the more coarse sense doors. And so, for it to do that, you need to maintain consistent mindfulness, and then right mindfulness, and then some samadhi develops. And this is basically uh, samadhi. It's still probably... Upajara samadhi, but upajara, you know, touching on jhana, it can be very refined. So that sense of, I need to ask this person one on one a couple of questions. But anyway, it's uh, to see exactly what it is. But it's a good sign that one's efforts to be consistently mindful and circumspect are getting some good results. And but once again, it's the coming out of the peace being really careful with what we attend to and using the extra energy to contemplate anicca, dukkha, anatta and uh, understand that it's arising due to conditions and then when it kind of begins to crumble that's also because of conditions it's uh, the mind's going back to a more normal state and that's okay but we understand if we put forth a similar amount of effort consistently mindful and samadhi it comes back again to that kind of peace Anyway, it sounds good to me.